Oh, hello. I'm just having a, with me a smoothie break. Well deserved, I'd say, right, Kenneth? Yes. What a crazy morning we've had. Kenneth, say hello. Hello, everybody. We have been running our tushes off this morning. This afternoon, I guess it's two o'clock now already. Who knows where the time went. It's windy. It's not blowing everywhere. Did somebody say donuts? I did. I've been saying donuts a lot, an awful lot lately. Um, if you tuned in last week, we celebrated my birthday, my 38th birthday with some donuts. And today we're going to focus solely on these sweet baked and fried. We're doing both versions. Delectable delights. Donuts, whether you spell it D-O-N-U-T-S or D-O-U-G-H. What did I just spell? Did I even spell donut? D-O-N-U-T-S. Option one. And N, I think. D O U G H N U T S option dos. Doesn't matter how you slice it, we're talking about donuts. Um, if you are following me on Instagram, you'll see I've been posting a lot about donuts lately. Jerry and I have been talking about donuts between the just between the two of us a lot lately. Um, and hey, I just celebrated celebrated my 38th birthday, and we're gonna go back to when I was 18. This I've been going down memory lane a lot. And when I was 18, I worked for Canada's largest donut and coffee shop chain as an overnight baker. I didn't, I didn't make the donuts, but I made everything else. The cookies, the biscuits, the croissants, the... What else did I make? Everything but the donuts I made. Muffins. I made all the muffins. But I did help flip the donuts in the fryer, and I did help eat the donuts. Nothing more delicious than a chocolate, chocolate cake donut. Timbit. Timbit. Tim Hortons was the place. Fresh out of the fryer, fresh out of the chocolate sugar glaze. Oh my god. You can get to your local donut shop the moment that they're bringing out the donuts and they're still warm and the glaze is still melty. Do it, man. It's so delicious. That means you might have to get up at like 3 in the morning. Smoothie break. Let's see who's watching. I brought my iPad out with me today so Kenneth can keep an eye on the phone. I can call all y'all up on the Rhythmia Facebook page. Where does it tell me that we're live? There it is. Oh my goodness. Okay, so... This dehydrator we have out really has nothing to do with our Facebook Live today. But again, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen in my stories already today that I had a camera crew here hanging around. Um, we are currently filming Thrive 2. So if you are a follower of the Thrive Movement um, brought to you by Kimberly Foster Gamble, um, if you've seen Thrive the movie Thrive, then you'll, just so you know, we're, we're in the middle of throwing, <laughs> we are in the middle of filming Thrive 2. I know you'd like that, Kenneth. Kenneth loves when I do that. Um, and I can't talk. <laughs> I've been talking all day. I was so tired. My mouth doesn't want to cooperate. But we're filming Thrive 2 currently. So we had some really kick-ass camera guys here today. We, are, we filmed a bunch of me, me prepping stuff, my, myself and some of my restaurant staff bringing things out to the buffet. Filmed a lot of really fun stuff with them this morning and then that cut into my prep time for this. So I didn't get necessarily ever, didn't get to prepare everything I wanted to do for the donuts, but I got a lot done. Let's see who's watching. Mirk is watching, Alana's watching, Jacques is watching, Kival is saying hello, hello. Mirka is watching from Finland, Marina McKenzie's watching from Canada, Tom, Tammy just joined us, Claudia's watching, so good to see you Claudia. Marina is saying she's a big follower, Tammy Cowden is watching, oh my goodness, so good. Again, if you guys are tuning in, let me know where you're watching from and, and, and I'd love to see that. Look at how windy it is, my, my feather earrings. And get this, I didn't even know that I was going to be being recorded for this documentary today and I wore such beautiful colors. Pretty good choice in wardrobe, I'd say, wouldn't you say, Kenneth? Not the most professional, to say the least. And definitely not, like check this out, it's like a full length dress. And if you guys knew how hot it was, you'd think I was crazy. Wearing like a full length dress. And it's what, like 31, 32 degrees Celsius here right now and I've been running in out of the kitchen. Anyways, shall we get down to business? Not yet, not to the recipes, because we're going to talk about two things. La la la, my two cookbooks. So, I talk a lot about Rhythmia Meals. This is the, the Miracle Meals cookbook that I've created here based on the most wanted recipes from Rhythmia as of May 2017. But a lot of things have changed, so I'm working on a next another cookbook. 
and I'm thinking I'm focusing on soups and sauces because those seem to be the most requested things these days. And if you have a handful of really good sauces and soups, you can really add that to what you already know and it really ups your home cooking game. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'm hopefully going to have something about that done by the end of December of this year. I'm also working on my other book, my memoir that has recipes in it that I've been writing since 2012. Hopefully that'll be ready in 2019. But I wanted to point you guys to this one. If you already have Miracle Meals and you want more of my simple fun recipes, this is a book I wrote in 2013. It's available on iTunes in the iBook store. It's also available through my website. You can order a hard copy delivered to your door um, or an ebook through iTunes. And it is all vegan, mostly raw. And this is a comp compilation of, of recipes that I, there is 62 pages of recipes that I used to teach in classes. There's a little bit about raw food, why raw food, but about my story, how to sprout, and tons of recipes from when I first got into this and when I was writing for magazines and blogging and things like that. So this is a really great collection of recipes if you've already got the Miracle Meals and you want something different. Um, I just had this printed here in Costa Rica, so I'm super excited about getting copies of this one in the bookstore here with me. And Jerry and I talked about that earlier this week. So enough about that, enough of my sales pitch. Let's see who else is watching Then We're going to get cooking. Haha, <laughs> yes, Jacques, I do know you're watching. Uh, uh, uh. Tammy says, hi, Meg, I'll be there in four weeks. Cool, Tammy, I'm so excited to have you here. Excellent. So we're talking about donuts, and I just was running through the kitchen getting my stuff together to start this live. And one of our amazing guests hollered, he's like, are the donuts you're making vegan? I said, yes, two recipes are vegan, one of them is not. And none of them are gluten-free today. You could use gluten-free flour, but I, I, I was like, I'm doing donuts, I'm gonna do it, I'm frying some even. So we're gonna talk about various different things. Um, last week we talked about baking donuts, so we are gonna talk about, uh, we're gonna use some baked donuts here to talk about toppings later, but I just wanted to remind you if you do wanna try baking your donuts at home, you can get great baking uh, trays like this. This is my mini donut one, I had a bigger one on display in last week's live. But you can find these at many kitchen supply stores now, so I use that to bake, and if you just wanna show them, I baked these, these little guys earlier, these are vegan donuts that I baked. And we're gonna to top those with various different toppings later. But in the meantime, we're gonna talk about these guys. Like, look at these beautiful deep fried golden donuts. Hallelujah. So we just fried these up, they're still cooling. Um, here, let's, let's do this. Oh, doughy goodness. So good. So we just fried these up um, not 10 minutes ago. So I have my oil still heating up beside here. We're gonna be using that momentarily for two different recipes, but I wanted to show you part of the process as to how I got to this point in time with these donuts. So this morning, like I said, I planned to come in with lots of time to prepare for this, but we had other plans, the universe had other plans, and we were doing, um, we did that shoot for the documentaries, but I still had time to make my, my amazing yeast donut mix. So this is some of the, the dough left over that I made and I'm gonna post you guys the recipe. It was really, really easy. It was just a matter of, you know, there, there was some, some dry yeast involved here and if I had had more time, I would have let this raise up a lot more um, and double in size so that we, you know, we could have some really fluffy, fluffy donuts. But in the essence of TV, I'm not gonna worry about it. But I wanted to show you how I managed to get those shapes. So this is just like, you know, it's any old dough. It's flour, um, it's yeast, there's some, uh, this recipe in particular is not the is the non-vegan one, so it has some egg in it and also has some regular milk in it. You could swap out or just use a vegan recipe. There's tons out there on the internet now. Um, but all I did was I, I combined all my ingredients. I mixed it all in my trusty um, counter mixer here. Again, I love this thing. If you're wondering why I'm doing so much baking right now, it's because I bought this for myself for my birthday, so I'm all about baking right now. Um, and then I, so I kneaded it in here, combined it, and then I, I really, I let it, I, I kneaded it with my hands like old school I was out here um, kneading it earlier and now this is the process all we need to do is I am um, iron I just called this an iron this is not an iron this is a rolling pin in case you didn't know we need to iron out our dough aka roll it out to about I don't know half an inch centimeter it's really not all that technical as much as baking is quite technical as far as measuring and things like that and I this is the only time I use measuring utensils is when I'm baking because it's super important um, that's what we're gonna do today and then what I did to make these little shapes which are gonna maybe attempt to stuff later and fill is I have this little dope, we can call it a dough cutter we can call it a pretty salad stacker 
Like I use this quite often for plating. I think you've seen me probably do it when I did the Thanksgiving. I, I was plating shepherd's pie using this as like a nice way to stack ingredients. But today it's gonna be our dough cutter. So all we do is that. And then we deep fried that. I actually would let this sit and raise and double in size again in a warm place to get really big fluffy donuts. We don't have that time. Um, if you want it to be like a traditional donut, you could grab something, something else round and tiny and cut a hole in the middle or what we're gonna do is just stick our finger through the middle. La la la. And then we have a donut shape. It's, you know, I, uh, how many times do I say that I'm rustic? Look at that, and that's perfect. Hallelujah. And then all we're gonna do, hall hallelujah, it's a donut. Oh my goodness. So then I'm gonna just put this in the oil. Hopefully it's still warm enough. It's not, it's not even on. So we're gonna have to wait. Was it not on? Yeah. No. Okay, so we're gonna wait. Hopefully that gets warm enough so that we can actually do something with it later. I'm gonna keep this. I've just pulled off a tiny piece of dough here, and I'm gonna use this as a sample to toss in there to see if it bubbles up. Is it on high now? Did you put it on high? Okay. So we'll wait for that. In the meantime, I'm gonna cut out a few more of these because I can. La, la, la. Who else is watching? So I never. I'm, I'm gonna try to pay more attention to this. Jason is giving a thumbs up. Asana is saying hello. Mandy's saying hello. Hey, Asana, so good to see you. Just kidding. I'm not married, but even when I was, I didn't wear a ring. Um, Mandy is saying I love the blue color. Chris is watching. Who likes deep fried? We all love deep fried. Lorraine is watching. <sighs> so good. Okay, so I'm cutting out more of these just because we can. And sometimes, I mean, if you don't have a gluten issue, like, go for the gluten. I had this amazing meal the other night um, at home. My, my friend Chad Sarno, he's a, a vegan chef, you may know have, of him, he is um, one, of, one part of Wicked Healthy, him and his brother Derek own a, a, a plant-pushing food company called Wicked Healthy. They do a lot of really great and innovative things for the plant-based food world. Um, Chad was just on the Today Show with Carson Daly this week. Um, pushing the new Whole Foods cookbook that he was co-author of and he did this amazing baguette on on the show which was a regular old toasted baguette and then he did this almost crab um, crab meat like topping for it it was hearts of palm and artichoke with vegan cream cheese old bay spice um, roasted tomatoes it was so good and that's what I had for dinner the other night it was like a big old hunk of baguette cut in half topped with this beautiful heart of palm artichoke and it was so good and and me and I enjoyed every bit of it and had no, no, no qualms about eating the gluten and the next day I felt excellent. Whereas I used to feel a little bit of effects from gluten but I used to eat it 24 seven. I would eat toast for every, bread for every meal. Um, but every once in a while having a whole ton of gluten makes me a happy girl. Back to my smoothie for a moment. So I'm just drinking if you're wondering. Liquid strawberries? banana, coconut water, ice cubes, and some plant-based vanilla protein powder. Delicious. I haven't had a chance to stop and sit and eat anything all day, so I'm like, I need to get a smoothie going. Okay, how are we doing here? Oil, it's gonna be a while, I bet. Oh, sorry, Kenneth, that was silly of me. I just threw that in. I could have slapped, you could have splattered hot oil on you. I'm such a jerk. I'm sorry. Hey, boy, are, you, are you upset with me, Kenneth? No. Okay, so it's almost there. Oh, it just rose to the top, so it's almost there. We're gonna give it a couple more minutes. In the meantime, we're gonna get on to another donut, and this is a, a version of, I think it was the Jamie Oliver recipe, if I, do, if I do believe. This is the only donut that I'd ever, I'm gonna get real with you here for a second. I've never fried a donut in my life until today. <laughs> you guys are actually gonna see the first time that I'm actually frying the donuts myself. Real talk, real talk. I, when I was doing private chefing, I had a family that I did a lot of vegan gluten-free baked donuts for. And I worked in a donut shop, but I never actually fried the donuts. Today, you're gonna witness it happening. Um, and this Jamie Oliver recipe is one that I've had, I think it's, I think it's Jamie Oliver, I have to double check. But it's a recipe I've had on hand forever wanting to try, because it's super easy. And today we're gonna try it together. And you guys are all used to seeing me conduct recipe fails live here because that's what I'm all about. 
we try it, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but Pura Vida, um, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna go for it. So step one of this recipe is melt your vegan margarine. And I'm gonna post the recipes in the comments. So this, I didn't even have to put this on the stove. This is my vegan margarine. It's just a plant-based um, shortening or, or margarine or whatever. And that, so it's just made of, of plants and not any dairy in there. So I've got that in here. I've just been sitting out in the sun. Like I said, it's so hot, so I didn't even have to put it on the stove. So I have it in a pot, it doesn't need to be in a pot. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna combine my butter. I'm gonna put this in you know what, no I'm not. I'm gonna combine all my liquids in this pot. So what do I have here? I've got my vegan butter. I've got some soy milk. I like, personally, I have found whenever I'm veganizing recipes, soy milk tends to be the best substitute to regular milk. The texture, the way it interacts with the other ingredients, I just find it's better. Almond milk I think is too thin in a lot of cases. Coconut milk is overpowering and too fatty. Um, so I find soy to be the best option. If you can't have soy, you can experiment with other stuff. Um, then I'm gonna add in this just this two tablespoons of oil, whatever handy oil you want to use. Here I'm using a, I think it was a sunflower oil. And today, this is not in the original recipe. I'm adding in a tiny bit of apple cider vinegar. And the only reason I'm doing this is because we didn't have any baking powder in the kitchen today. So I'm using a, a substitute. If you don't have baking powder, you can substitute baking soda one quarter of the amount of baking soda that you would use for baking powder and as long as your recipe has some acid in it, the acid's gonna help activate that soda to do the, the leavening effect of the baking powder. My recipe didn't have any acid in it, so I'm just putting in a tiny bit of apple cider vinegar. We're gonna just cross our fingers that that works. It's gonna curdle up that soy milk a little bit, but that's whatever, that's totally fine. And I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a, just a little mix to combine and I'm not gonna go too crazy because we're gonna put this in my mixer. <laughs> So as far as the dry ingredients go, flour, obviously, this is like 250 grams of regular old flour. Toss that in. Um, sugar, and I'm using like, this is a, this is a freaking donut, you guys. I'm using regular old castor sugar. Yep, it's white. Oh my God, I'm using white sugar. <laughs> Boo-hoo, I'm making donuts, you guys, and we're gonna deep fry it. So yes, I'm using white sugar. I know I'm gonna get some haters on that, but pura vida. These are for me and Kenneth, and we're okay. Yes, my yes. lunch. We're okay. So sugar, flour, adding in that baking soda that I just talk, talked about, and I remember last week you heard me, I was lecturing about the importance of sifting your baking soda. I didn't bring a sift, so I'm just gonna mash it here and make sure I don't have any um, chunks of baking soda. Perfect. Toss that in. A bit of salt. I think it's a half a teaspoon or so. And then, that it. That's it. So then I'm just going to put my mixer down here and I'm going to have it just combine these dry ingredients real quick. And then I'm going to add in my wet ingredients. this works out because I didn't, in the essence of time, I didn't measure as well as I should, probably should have. And I need some flour. I need more flour. I didn't bring it, oh, I didn't bring it in any flour. Oh, well. I'll have to get someone from the kitchen to bring me some flour. Ginger. Hmm? Here's a ring bell. Okay. Is that a bell? Where does that go? In the kitchen? Does that work? Such is life. 
Nancy saying hello. Raquel is saying hola from Arcata. 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 Raquel is saying soy milk, great tip. Yeah, I'm all about the soy milk and the baking. Okay, so in the meantime, we're just waiting for some flour. I'm gonna, whack, I'm gonna get in here, lift this up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start scraping my, you wanna come around here, Kevin? Mm -hmm. Scrape in my dough. It's a little bit wet, but that's fine because I'm going to add in some more flour. We just want to be able to form this into little golf balls. So I'm going to just fold in a bit more flour when it gets here. It's almost there. I didn't properly measure out my liquid to flour ratio, so we're just going to add a tiny bit more flour when it gets here. In the meantime, let's check out what's going on over here with our deep fryer. I'm going to come around here. And I think we're probably good to need to lower one of these bad boys right in. Want to get in and do a close-up of the oil? Mm -hmm. Thanks, honey. Okay, so we're going to put this in here. It's going to take a minute. Hi, Laura. Do you want to say hi to our viewers? Okay, she doesn't want to. Do you want to? <laughs> no. You don't want to be on camera? I don't want to be on camera. Okay, don't, don't shoot her. For the love of God, she's, the sec she's a secret agent. I'm shy. She's not shy. <laughs> we'll give you a donut, though, for helping us out when oh, we're done. Oh, yay. It's a good deal, right? Yep. Okay, so it's, it's, it's frying, it's being a little bit gentle, but it's working, and here's another little tip. Whenever I'm deep frying, whenever I'm deep frying donuts, it's my first time. <laughs> I read it on the internet. No, no, I'm just kidding. I've deep fried other things. Having a wooden utensil, like just this, this is just a skewer that we put like kebabs on. This is a nice helpful tool for flipping your ingredients. Um, and as you see, this donut rose to the top, and they always say that they, they always say that when you're deep frying and things float to the top, it's time to flip it. Well, that is not the truth here because that is not done. But we're going to let it go. Um, and this is just a great tool for flipping things in the oil because the, the wood won't get damaged and metal is not great for that. Um, because this is a, we're doing this on a tiny little cooktop out here. It's not a proper fight flame. It's not as hot as we would like it, but it'll happen. We just have to be patient. So I'm going to put a few more of these in while we're here. Don't want to put too many in because the more we put in, the lower the temperature of the oil will be. So maybe I'll just toss in four and let four of them go along here. There we go. See, this guy's already starting to rise to the top. Look at how big they're growing. And I love that. I like that Kenneth is fully prepared here. He's already got his coffee standing by for his <laughs> coffee and a donut. <laughs> ready he's ready he's not messing around okay so in the meantime we'll let those guys go Kenneth I'll have you if you can keep one eye in uh -huh. that pot and see if they get to brown which I don't think we need to be too concerned about and I'm just gonna go back to my my mix here in the mixer I'm gonna add in a tiny bit of flour get that mixing again you guys are learning here along with me because I'm you know we're making donuts my first time doing this particular recipe. I just want to get it so that the, the dough starts coming off the sides of the bowl by itself. So I'm just adding a, like a twelfth of a cup of flour at a time here. So I think that this feels good to me. I'm finishing up the So I'm going to, um, Kenneth is over there flipping, I'm going to put a bit of flour out here on my tray. Now this is a step that I don't think is necessary, necessarily, necessary, necessarily. Oh, I didn't even have that locked. I didn't even have that locked and loaded, kids. Um, but I am going to turn this out. Sorry. It was off the edge and I didn't want this thing, whole thing to topple. So I'm just going to scrape my flour out, I mean my, my dough, Dun -dun -dun. and this is going to be the, the easy way, the easy donut, the easy man's donut. Like that. Anytime I'm dealing with regular flour, it gets so sticky, I'm just going to get this soaking in water so that it doesn't harden up there onto my bowl. Oh, I just lost all the comments. Where'd they go? 
Raquel saying hello, Kenneth. Hello, Raquel. Wendy says she wished she was laying by the pool watching. Arcata, Arcata, Arcata. Raquel is reminding me, it's Arcata, Arcata. Penny Jane is watching. Raquel loves my new mixer. Me too. Can't get enough. Okay, so I'm gonna just flower this up a little bit because I need to be able to handle this because we're gonna be making this into dough balls, like little donut holes, if you will. Oh, so it's so light and airy. I think I think I'm supposed to knead it, maybe. I'm not following the recipe, obviously, but I am gonna knead it a little bit. We're gonna knead it and forward into balls. We're not gonna knead it and iron it. <laughs> don't need to iron this particular recipe, but I'm gonna need it. Now I'm not gonna need it as long as I probably should in the essence of Facebook Live time. That's as far as we're gonna go. And then we're just gonna tear it off and we're gonna make it into little golf ball size balls. And these are gonna be our donut holes. My mom used to make something on New Year's Eve, or New Year's Day, was it? Something, it was a Dutch tradition called olibollen. I think I've talked about this in the past, olibollen, which translates to oil balls. <laughs> so it was essentially a dough like this that my mom deep fried, um, but she had apples in it. It was apple and cinnamon deep fried, and then we just, as they came out of the fryer, she sprinkled them with powdered sugar. Pretty delicious, olibollen, oil balls. New Year's tradition in the, in, from the Dutch my Dutch heritage. Um, I'm just adding a bit of flour here as I do this. Okay, how are we doing with the donuts? Very good. They look pretty good. Um, so we're not going to actually let those ones, the ones that are here, I'm going to come around. I want to get some of these bad boys in. So I'm going to come around again. She'll be coming around the deep fryer when she comes. So some of these look pretty good. So I'm going to take some out and get them draining. Look at that. So these ones rose up quite a bit also because they have the egg in them. They're, they're, yeah, it's pretty, pretty good stuff. It smells delicious, doesn't it, Kenneth? So good. Oof. I'm gonna bring some of these to my friends later on this afternoon at sunset, I think. Oh, look at that golden brown. It's so good. Smells delicious, but I'm gonna take them out. They probably could go a little bit longer. I just about touched it. You see that? I was like, Meh. fresh out of the deep fryer, Meg. Not a good idea. So I'm gonna take these out so that I can get my tin bits, sorry, donut holes going. So I'm gonna take some of these little bad boys and I'm just gonna to toss them in. Whoop. Whoop. A little metal spider would be a great tool to use instead of your hands here. <laughs> Done. Okay, so come on, look at this. So good. They're super dense. Well, no, they're not. They're pretty light, actually. They're hot. <laughs> it's super hot, by the way. But let's move on. Let those cook away. Swap me sides there. Okay. Moving on. I'm gonna put some of this stuff here. Oh, you know what we're gonna do? Is we're gonna make a little little sugar flavoring for when those balls come out. So all I'm gonna do here is I've got my white sugar here. I'm gonna add some into this bowl with some vanilla powder. And this is gonna be like just a vanilla sugar that's gonna be really, really yummy. So as soon as these come out, they'll go directly in here because the sugar will adhere to them when they're still warm from the fryer. So we have this yummy vanilla sugar. We could add in some cinnamon if we wanted. That would be really delish. So this is gonna be the home for these balls. I'm gonna move these bad boys over here for now. We can deal with those in a bit. So then when these guys, yeah, you want to give those a little flipperoni there, Kenneth? Where my other colder? Okay. So let's talk topping, shall we? I mean, deep fried bread is a win, no matter how you look at it, as far as I'm concerned. 
but particularly delicious are the toppings that we put on them. So I have prepared over here a plethora of options for us. First one being the a really simple icing. Now look at this. Look at this. Doesn't that just look like the glaze that you're used to seeing on any of your donuts? And all this is is icing sugar and almond milk that I've whisked together. So good. And I'll show you how it's done. So this is my clean bowl here. Almond milk, icing sugar. Icing sugar, almond milk. Again, regular old sugar kids, we're making donuts. So I'm gonna start with maybe a cup of this icing sugar. And then I'm just gonna put in like a tablespoon at a time, this almond milk. Because this flour, this sugar really condenses when you add liquid. So it can seem like a lot when you've got it in powder form, but as soon as you start adding in your liquid, it really, really goes down to nothing. And all we gotta do is whisk this real good and this becomes a really easy glaze. And this is a great base for anything that you're making. If you're making a lemon cake, if you're making cookies, you can play around with the, 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 the consistency. You want it thicker, more sugar, less milk. You want it thinner, more milk, less sugar. So this is gonna be the base of many of our not going to do it. Adding a tiny bit more sugar. Because we don't want it too drippy drip drip. Perfect. Now, we have a bunch of those donuts ready to go. These original, these ones here that we started earlier. So, let's talk toppings here. more detail but this is a packaged icing with no high fructose corn syrup very specific on the label you could just ice your ice ice your donuts with something like this let's be very clear about that I need a spoon I need a spoon what maybe I mean this is you know no harm no foul you're already deep frying donuts you might as well go all out with the packaged topping so that's that's an okay thing and then come on why not happy time happy place vegan this is a vegan donut with a delicious vegan is this vegan let me see pretty sure this is probably all just processed shit so there's probably no milk or anything in it actually there is milk in this packaged dicing but it doesn't matter pure uh, vegan Maybe we'll do another couple like that. So this is literally just chocolate icing and sprinkles. And this would make any of your neighborhood kids or Kenneth's <laughs> happy, right? Right. Who doesn't, what adult doesn't love a sprinkle donut? When I was a girl, we, my mom always stopped to get Dale donuts from one of the local grocery stores on the way home from church. And we always all fought over the sprinkle donut. So good. I just want to get my whole... Here we go. So we got two chocolate sprinkles. So that is like the easiest of the easy as far as donuts are concerned, right? Now let's get more into the, how are our balls doing by the by? They're not the prettiest. I'm not gonna lie about that. Um, by the way, I'm gonna post the recipe for these little guys. So these vegan donuts, look at the texture as I open this up. They're a vegan cake donut and they are the easiest recipe that you're ever, ever, ever gonna come across. It was like a bunch of dry ingredients and about a bunch of wet ingredients that I literally just mixed in a bowl by hand and then put into a, that little baking tray and baked them off. The texture is super dense, the flavor is donut-y. 
Hi, darling. We're making donuts. Yeah, you want to try? This is the this is the vegan baked donut base. We're just saying it's not the most. It's all about the toppings when it comes to donuts. Let's be real. It's cakey. Mm -hmm. It's really just the vessel for the topping. Don't like it. Is this? That yeah, that's what's going on here. That's my live. Oh, you guys might know this guy. He does some social media. Uh huh. <laughs> Ryan Cropper. He does some comments here. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty interactive. We get people watching every week from um, Finland to Australia and Sarajevo. There's one person from Slovakia. It's pretty cool. Awesome. A lot of returning guests and a lot of guests that are on their way. They're like, I'm coming in four weeks. I'm coming in two weeks. I'll see you in six months. Yeah, Super fun. chocolate on that? Okay, so what I've done so far is this is a non-vegan chocolate icing and sprinkles. I'm giving them levels of things to try. And level one was buy it, icing in a container. Mm. Making it accessible. You're already making your own donuts. You, you can buy your icing if you want. We got some ice, some icing, some icing, some donut holes frying up here that I keep forgetting about. They're still cooking. Our oil wasn't hot enough. I've never seen donuts made like this before. Deep fried? Yeah. This is how donuts are made. Really? Baking is like the the healthy way. Deep frying is is really what's up when it comes to donuts. How'd you get to it? Thank you. Tastes great. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Well, we have some of the vegan ones all made up real nice. I'll save some for you. Yeah. Just these ones? Yeah. Those ones are vegans and and do, 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 do. these ones are vegan. Right. Which are going to be covered in a vanilla vanilla sugar when they're done. Right on. These are too. Yeah, this guy. We know this guy too. Kevin, what up? <laughs> okay. So, option number one. Option number two is make your own delicious toppings. And what we're gonna do here today is we're gonna make uh, cookies and cream. This is one of my favorite cookies from when I was a child. Mashing it up. Cookies and cream donuts. I wonder what we're after time. This just feels like this has been a long one, hasn't it? So all we need to do here now is take some of our donuts, put it in that icing that we were just talking about. This is really just gonna be what adheres things, right? And then we'll put that on the tray and then we'll just sprinkle on. Oh yeah, come on. How does that look? Doesn't that look yummy? Delicious. And then we could add in. What do you think about that, Kenna? Pretty good, right? And we could do one of these big guys the same way. So I'm just gonna do my icing, the glue, AKA the glue. Put that on my tray. Cookies and cream, chocolate. Yummo. Ooh, okay, no, I'm not gonna do that yet. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do here is a peanut butter version. So what I've got here is some just straight up peanut butter, all natural peanut butter, no salt, no sugar added. And I'm gonna put in some of this icing that's gonna sweeten it and it's also gonna give it a bit more of a consistency that we can use to ice our donuts. So this is just peanut butter, icing, sugar, almond milk. I want it, yeah. I want it so it's gonna coat the donut like an icing. A little bit more of this. Where am I at for time anyway? Oops. 38 minutes. This is a longie. Sorry guys. I'm gonna get to the finished products for you. So peanut butter, icing, sugar, goodness. Take one of our donuts. And I'm purposely taking one that had the hole still filled because we're gonna put some jam in the middle. What? You got it. So I'm gonna put some peanut butter on top. It needs to be a bit more runny. You know about a sticky stuff, kids. Yeah, that looks better. Put that back in. Yes. Peanut butter licious. And then I've got here some jam. As well, this is just some homemade strawberry jam. I've added some of that beautiful 
like some sugar almond milk. And I, I was just going to put this in the middle, but you can't really see the middle anyway, so I'm just doing some jam lines. How's that look, Kenneth? What do you think? And then Delicious. we got the feast de resistance, some cacao nibs, cacao peanut butter and jam. What? You got it. Pretty good, right? Okay, let's check on these guys real quick. This one is probably. What? Look at that one's done. So I'm just letting that oil drain a tiny bit. I'm gonna let it drain off here a tiny bit too. It's so good. They're not pretty. They're gonna be tasty. Can't see these ones. If I had taken some time to actually form these into nice balls and let the dough needed the dough as it should have been needed and all of that, it, they would probably be out prettier, but we're gonna cover them in sugar, so who cares? Is that all? Is that the last one, Kenneth? Okay. Is there any more in there? Nope. Okay. So all I'm doing there is, yeah, and then I'm gonna take one of these, toss it in. This is the vanilla sugar that we made. Oh, so good. What? What? Come on. Donuts. Not bad for a first timer, I'd say. One, two. I'm gonna get all of these sugared before they get, because as soon as they cool, the sugar's not gonna stick so well. Fresh out of the fryer, my hands are pretty tough. Got Cook's hands. They don't, they don't feel the heat. One more, little guy. Come on. So good, right? Okay, so a couple more. One more beautiful, fun thing that we're gonna play around with here. So I'm gonna take a bowl. I'm gonna add in some of this icing. Like so. And then I'm gonna add in two things. First thing on one half of the side of the bowl, and I saw this on my YouTube video a while back. This is spirulina, like a really fine spirulina powder. I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of that, and this is gonna be a color. So I'm just gonna stir it into half the bowl here. Being careful to not get it spreading too much. My green spirulina. And then I'm gonna add a tiny bit of beet juice. I don't know if this is gonna work because it's pretty thin. My idea was to make like a unicorn color. I don't think it's gonna work, you guys, but we'll try it. No, it's too runny and my donuts are too hot. Pure Vita. It would have worked to make a really fun unicorn color, but it's not happening. But now we have a nice red icing. This donut's still pretty hot from the fryer, so nothing's sticking to it. But, glaze it with some strawberry, more sprinkles, a bada boom bada bing. The last thing I want to do is attempt something that is probably a silly idea. <laughs> probably, let's be real. I forgot to get a knife, so I don't have a knife, do I? So I'm going to cut, this is just some pineapple jam that I've got in my little Ziploc and then I'm going to try to cut a tiny bit of a hole in the end. Perfect. Just big enough so that some of this jam can squirt out. I'm going to grab one of these donuts, one of the big fluffy ones. And where did that wooden skewer go, Kenneth? Is it over there? I'm going to stick this wooden skewer in the end here. Make a little hole, make a little room in there. There was a machine, when I used to work at a donut shop, there was a machine for filling donuts. This is my pathetic attempt to do it without a machine. So I'm making a little space in the middle. And I'm gonna take this, squeeze, and squeeze. It's like I'm making 
a pineapple jam filled donut. I think it's working, guys. Whoops! But it was filling, which is super fun. And then, we can just do this. Now it's a lemon cream pie donut with sugar. What do you think? Ridiculous, mm -hmm. plain, fun? Waiting for one coffee cup and that's it. Exactly. So that's all I have, guys. Like, seriously, donuts for all, donuts for ages. My first time for donuts. And it was fun. Um, we're gonna finish designing these up real pretty. And then we are going to post some pictures on my Instagram. So I'm gonna post the comments as well, in, in, the, sorry, the rece recipes in the comment section so you guys can all try these recipes at home. I would love to see how successful, how much more successful you probably are than I am. <laughs> My son is asking a question, if there's another way to make it taste as sweet without using sugar, you can play around with substituting your sugar for things like monk fruit sweet sweetener. You could use coconut sugar, you could use any kind of sweetener that you like. Um, in baking, regular old sugar, I find, is always just the best, you know, as far as coming out for quality. So when, if you can use it, use it. If not, play around with those substitutions. Um, excellent. So that's it, Michael. That's it. That's it. That's all. I'm done. I'm not going to do anything else. I hope that you guys are having a beautiful Sunday. Share this with anyone that, thinks, that you think might want to know how to make donuts at home. And next Sunday, we're going to be live again. I can't remember what the topic is. I think it might be about aqua fava. It's making things with with chickpea cooking water. What, you ask? You'll have to tune in to find out. Have a beautiful day and a beautiful week. Love you, bye Kenneth. Bye bye everybody. Ciao. Ciao.